we will keep you giving you data now you are connected and going lab we'll give you complete analysis okay okay of, fine fine we will give you everything now is about then uh, uh, 30 people are uh, still there and right. now people are joining so it will tell so you should we start should we start yes it's it it's says still be. connecting on my screen good go it says now we so online okay <laughs> right fine so good morning mr sharma okay uh, i think it's good afternoon there right and uh, good afternoon uh, mr obag so it's what be here and uh, to moderate this post covid uh, world order i'll give you a little background of uh, you know the industry from which i come how it, that has been performing so we had a lockdown for almost uh, 50 days and uh, it was a secular lockdown so from you know more than 200 factories were shut down transportation was uh, almost uh, completely shut down although the transportation started uh, a little earlier than that the good movement started retail was completely shut down e-commerce was shut down distribution was shut down so it was a complete shutdown the essentials were working and uh, at that time uh, the the most terrible thing was that uh, the uh, digital products which were most essential extremely essential were not declared as essential so we uh, lost out on sales we lost out on uh, you know the there was a desperate need for products and so on so entire focus at that time was to build capacity in the country and uh, then in the middle of uh, may we started opening so there was a lot of restriction on uh, movement of uh, labor personal employees and so on because factories cannot be run digitally factories have to run with people producing the products and uh, we were in the middle of the most landmark uh, reform and uh, scheme uh, government of india introducing a scheme uh, and that got stalled also for some time it is famously called the pli scheme production linked incentive which uh, was meant to take our industry to a very different level uh, from being uh, you know largely domestic uh, manufacturing focus to a global scale and uh, uh, global uh, uh, you know players global value chains were coming to india and starting off uh, companies like samsung apple and so on so this was the scenario and then uh, you know the normalization happened that the demand was very explosive so you will be happy to know that we are now almost reaching pre covid levels and we'll end the year which is we end the year in march instead of december we'll end the year with near normal uh, uh, sales compared to 2019 20 so it's it's been a huge uh, improvement the bounce back is is uh, you know uh, almost like a v shape bounce back so i would like to know your views uh, first uh, mr obal that how do you see europe responding in the post covid uh, this thing because europe concerns us uh, europe is a very important it's nearly 20% of the world uh, gdp uh, maybe little less with uh, so how is europe going to reform uh, you know perform after uh, the vaccinations come in and yeah. during the period because tourism is is a major earner and tourism is down so mm. how is uh, europe going to cope and how is that going to impact the rest of the world yeah the uh, the world will not be the same after the this pandemic as it is uh, has been before as everyone has seen um and uh, I, but i first want to thank imba for inviting me to this event and i mentioned especially mr kabrat singh and mrs vinakshi kara and all other actives in imba and uh, 
uh, as for those in the audience who doesn't know me, I have one foot in India, in Delhi, one foot in Europe. My ma main base in Europe is uh, Stockholm. My second uh, base is London. And uh, I was supposed to, to be in India several times by now this year, but I left India in January and, and, and couldn't go back to this due to this pandemic. And I was also supposed to go to London in Mars, which was not possible. And this is what happened in Europe now is that uh, that uh, I, I see we have many different reactions uh, to, to what happened. We have those who, who did nothing first and ignored it and then later maybe start to react. We had some who was panicking and we had some who who with a short notice tried to do planned and systematically to meet this pandemic and everything. Uh, we saw that our system was not working optimal for a pandemic. In Sweden, for instance, we saw all people that uh, was taking in all people's care homes and in, in their private homes, uh, got some uh, people coming and serving them uh, when they were sold. And, and that system was not made to handle a, a pandemic, first of all, because uh, uh, th there was no way to protect people from the infections when, when one people was running out and in from different places. Uh, it was not in place that the right organization. Also, we saw that Sweden, who used to, uh, uh, until 20 years ago, have a very big backup of storage of products and food and all kinds of things and able to survive if it was uh, locked had assumed that at these times was over when we need to handle our own issues. And suddenly we were uh, sitting there with the closed borders and everything, and that will have a, a big impact in the future. Uh, and I can tell the audience straight away that one issue which definitely will be there is that discussions will come in the future, and not only in Sweden, but I think in all these countries uh, in Europe, uh, to what extent we should be dependent on import from Asia uh, if it's so difficult to suddenly get it, or to what extent the production should be at our own uh, backyards, or more closer to us. And, and, and this is something that Indian companies and organizations need to uh, approach how, how to try I think we've to just lost a bit of things from so a scientific oh, point of view to you, others from an ideological company point of view. Um, others are more impulsive how they handle things. And it has created a chaotic world in things. But um, as, as we were talking earlier, Imba was, uh, I think, also in itself an organization, I saw a bit shake, shaked by the pandemic when it arrived. But now Imba is up and running and making this conference and other activities. And I think that this happens with a lot of people. But there are changes in how, how it works. We see, as has been mentioned before, travel industry is uh, much less. The, the airlines have a headache, and all people say we won't travel anymore. We see much more online meetings, working from home, and so And I think you see this worldwide, and online shopping instead of physical shops. And in Sweden, we was very surprised, because when we uh, got this information on pandemic coming to Sweden, we thought that uh, house prices, for instance, would crash. It will go down because more and more people will be unemployed and there will be economic uh, re recession and so on. To our big surprise, the house prices went up like nothing and houses were sold quicker than before. And even second homes was done. So why was that? What happened in Sweden was that when more and more people was working from home, think of a family, you have two parents and two kids. They're living in an apartment, and uh, normally they are just there for for you know for the night and uh, and little like that. They say, but otherwise people are out running, doing all things. They are working in different places and so. And suddenly, both parents have to work from home uh, online, and uh, uh, kids also maybe could go to school as before if they have a, have a maybe someone who is going who's 16, 17, going to school and have to do it online. So the apartment is too small. So what happened is people start to uh, to buy houses so they have more space so they can be there. And the other thing was that when they realized they couldn't travel abroad so much, and Swedish people have been traveling a lot as tourists, 
uh, not at least to London, but also to, to Mediterranean and other places. So what happened is that they started to buy second homes in the countryside or with a, near a lake or the sea or, or up in a hill or something. So they can. So, so what we have been through here is it's a big change like that. And I think this kind of I, I just a few examples I give, which will have effect all over Europe. Different countries will meet this in different uh, different ways, and. And, and, and as I see it now also is that because what's happening in Europe is that some companies are closing down, plus the markets is changing. And <clears throat> some are closing down, not because they don't have a good product for the market, but they can't sustain the pandemic. And what will happen is that I say the companies in India, and I think there are many advocates there who, who are dealing with companies, they need maybe to be better on on uh, investing and 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 take up this Europe uh, angle. There are so many possibilities you now when there becomes gaps in the market needed for things and uh, pick up the uh, what's left of a company that that was bankrupt and but there's still a, a a good business idea for the future. China is very aggressive in Europe and buying and buying big companies, medium-sized companies, even small companies, whereas India is just picking a few. There is no strategy for India to be active towards there. And I think that we do uh, things... Uh, 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 sorry, the, the, I, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, Oberg. Mm. I have one question for you. Here yes. is uh, how the pen, this COVID has created a more demand from India to uh, Europe rather than the China as a manufacturer. If there is any change towards the attitude of uh, Euro, uh, China, the perception of China. Uh, well, I, I think it's, it is in both Europe and the USA and many countries now we see that people are, are more hesitant they are more afraid of getting in the hands of, of China, which is trying to deliberately take control of a lot of activities in Europe and so on to, to, to do uh, run their politics and their interests. They want to be the number one in the world that people have to follow. And, and to balance that, people uh, will prefer that it also can come from India because India is a democracy. It's a prefer to, to deal with democracy instead of this. I mean, Sweden, for instance, we have had a lot of fights with China uh, last periods. They had arrested a, a, an ethnic Chinese Swedish person who who who, who was running a a, a, a book a book company giving out books. He he was actually in Thailand, and they kidnapped. I think it was there. The Chinese kidnapped him there, brought him to China. And, and put in there. So we have a lot of this type of uh, difficult pro uh, problem. And uh, and uh, yes, and the attitude towards China is more negative now, definitely, uh, than it was a few years back. So uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, oh, Mr. Sharma, we've lost his connection. I don't know. Should we just wait for him to come back? <laughs> Is this China? Uh, is this China thing for real? Or is it, uh, you know, uh, just a rhetoric because uh, we have seen, uh, you know, China not abiding by uh, global treaties and, you know, pretending uh, many things. So the Europe and uh, European countries and uh, the US has actively supported uh, China's uh, growth in the face of uh, all this. Yes. So do no. you think? Is uh, inflection point in a change of direction in global relations, or uh, it is just the same rhetoric? I think it's two things. It's a, uh, uh, it's not it's only, a, I think it's not uh, only it is the right question for uh, Mr. Sarmaji. He is back. Sarmaji? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Lost, uh, Sarmaji. Uh, again. No, I just let me say something. I think it's important to say that the, the it's both real, but it's also we can't we can't live without China. Also, it's a part of the world. It's a too big player to to be lived out. We can't live without India. We can't live without China. But 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 generally, pe people are looking at new options. And, and and I think everybody in India by now knows that many companies say that maybe they should shift from China to India. And uh, 
put more emphasis on India. But I say it's not that easy because India is not fully prepared to handle these things. Uh, uh, India is, uh, is complicated to handle from a European perspective. That's a very profound statement you've made. Uh, I'm sure a lot of it is to ask us for better action, but uh, I would like to know where, uh, you know, very humbly, that where, what do you think are India's chief disabilities? And, disabilities uh, are, are not are, lack of preparedness. No, uh, 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 Mr. Sharma is back, so. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Oberg, I'll, yes, I'll direct I'm the question here. to Mr. Sharma. Only you. <laughs> Mr. Sharma, the uh, you know, you uh, Britain the has taken a... to me because I. Yes, your your voice is a little breaking, but I can you hear me now? I can hear you, but uh, partially. Okay, so the, the question was, uh, you see, first of all, Try again, your uh, world. Uh, uh, so, Mr. Sharma, uh, Honorable Member of Parliament, I my question is that two uh, questions. One is that first your worldview on how the, uh, you know, economy is pan out uh, now onwards until uh, post covid uh, you know once large populations are inoculated how the world economy will pan out and what will be britain's uh, you know how you see the britain uh, behaving in and responding in a world like that that was the first part of my question hello oh that's a, we have a connection most uh, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, Eddie, uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Kaviraj, and everybody else involved in organizing this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, congratulations and uh, thank you. Uh, I was uh, in Delhi a couple of years ago. Yes, I can hear you. That's it. That's, that's, that's good <laughs> enough for me. Uh, I was in Delhi a couple of years ago, and uh, it's a pity that uh, we could not uh, organize the same way it uh, like last time, so that I could visit Delhi yeah. uh, and good excuse to come to Delhi. You uh, uh, at my Britain. at my event the same day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very neat. Uh, most of the we have all, sweet memories. Uh, of that event, yes. uh, but Britain is uh, at present is struggling, and I'm uh, very frank. Not because I am not part of the government, but that is the fair comment to make. At present, uh, Britain is also criticised for slowness. in responding to the COVID-19. Uh, uh, tourism is at uh, 5% is uh, not existing. Uh, uh, Aviation is dead. Where we used to have, say, 7 million, as 1 million people. So that I think we can. We'll we'll just wait for your connection to get better. I'll I'll. Uh, Mr. Sharma, your connection is too too slow at the moment. We can't hear what you say. 
Yeah, your voice is breaking. Uh, we can hardly hear uh, you now, Mr. Uh, I think I'll, I'll, uh, Mr. Sharma, we can hardly hear you. So I think let the connection get better. I'll go back to Mr. Oberg. Uh, what were you uh, saying uh, before? And if you could continue with your chain of thoughts. Then what, what, I, what I was uh, uh, saying. Sharma ji, can you uh, switch off your uh, video so that uh, okay. no, you get rest. Yeah. Connection. Can, can someone get a message to Sharma, which is not uh, uh, by, by song, song, but some text you message to him? Reduce the quality of his streaming as well to low. Uh, uh, either yeah, can, yeah, yeah. You can you can lower the quality of his stream video streaming so that uh, your connections improve. improves and we can hear you. Or sir, uh, you can uh, keep the slightly if you are logging through a laptop or a desktop, keep the voice place closer to you so that your voice is caught properly. Maybe closing the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have a slightly better view, so kindly push your laptop towards yourself closer. Okay, so I, now there, there. Yeah. we can hear him. You, you, uh, he should shut off the video actually. Yeah, I agree. Picture will still be displayed. Oh, your voice is still uh, breaking, Mr. Sharma. If, if you could switch off your video, probably that would be better. Yeah, I think. Let me see guidance. How to switch off. The now it's clear. So now it was clear. Your voice was very clear once you went close. They were. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Brexit means is uh, one more thing is that uh, they have a connection issues as well. Yeah. No, maybe. <laughs> I think this should be fine. Yeah, Mr. Sharma, please continue, please. Much okay. better. Is that okay? Hello? Yeah. As I was saying, is also struggling yes. after COVID-19. Uh, Britain is not achieving good goals. Uh, reason is that uh, uh, the economy is 1.78 trillion pounds in debt. <laughs> and also uh, aviation industry is uh, partially dead. Uh, the lockdown is on until next week. Then we are partially opening. The struggling is the phrase I use on the Britain side. But Britain also looking forward for relationships with, uh, with uh, India. And I don't think that Britain is very keen on China. The reason is though China is a big player, but China generally seen is cannot be trusted. So that's where Britain present is looking at how best we can build relationships, both in uh, economic and trade side. Uh, so I in, in a very difficult position at this stage, when we will be normal once and until the situation is normalized, it's very difficult. Small businesses, uh, diaspora, everybody is working on the basis of that. Uh, generally, uh, uh, Pankaji, in the 
Britain, it is uh, considered that long term, Britain and India has the strongest relationship for many reasons. Culturally, uh, then the diaspora is, uh, as you can see, a person my, like myself who born and brought up in India, moved to Britain, now is a member of parliament or the whatever uh, the term sometimes people, media use it the longest or the oldest, whatever <laughs> as they like to choose. That uh, uh, we, we have moved into economic life of Britain, uh, social life and political life of Britain. Uh, we have a yes. reasonable place in the British society, which is uh, helpful to build. Uh, before COVID-19, uh, India was uh, the second largest country of investment, uh, raised, uh, given jobs to over 100,000 uh, workers in Britain. Uh, economically, we were good. And I, I'm looking forward. Once the situation is normalized, uh, then Britain, uh, once we are out of Europe now, uh, Britain have the eyes on India. But uh, people like myself and uh, many others are reminding British Uh, people as well. Oh, we uh, it's not the Empire days any longer. It will be the equal and Britain on equal mm -hmm. level rather than uh, his or uh, master's voice level. So that's what uh, generally is uh, seen here, and that's where we are. Mr. Sharma, what would your? This was my question to Mr. Oberg also. What do you see are India's uh, chief disabilities and? What would be your advice to us to become a more vibrant economy and more welcoming for foreign capital? Uh, what kind of uh, uh, advice you would like to give to India? Especially that we can, you know, in this environment, we can overtake China as a, uh, as a preferred partner for manufacturing. Hello. Uh, okay, I'll I'll put put that question to you, Mr. Oberg. You were in the yeah. middle of India at that time. Yeah, we have trouble with the London contact today. What I will say, one of the first things I see is the education system. India is uh, very successful in getting people education and take exams but it's much less effective when it comes to uh, 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 have creativity and, and, uh, and, and, and be, ha be prepared for changes. Uh, um, if you look at China and the development of China, there is one ingredient they have been using that I have not seen much of in, in India. It's not zero in India, but it's not at all to the scale. China took in a lot of uh, students, university students and, and young people from, from Europe and taught them Chinese and the Chinese system, but also make sure they have the degrees in, in, in uh, economy or in uh, engineering and all kinds of things. And then they employed them for helping them to develop. They also brought in people from Europe for the marketing and developing of the business with Europe. And these things is that what I see a lot of Indian companies and people do is that they, they, they want to say that, yes, we are the experts on everything. You don't want to admit that there is something we don't know. So we don't want to bring in any people who can help us because that, that would be to say that, that we are not perfect. And, and I think this attitude needs to change that, yes, bringing people from outside, integrate with Europe instead of, 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 of trying to, to just be outside it. And I think that could be a, a, a good way forward. And then the Indian industry had a problem already before the pandemic that the world and India was changing, going from a low price country to a, towards a medium price country. And how to change this 
uh, structure and and to be more active outside India because when you're only producing, uh, it's okay to be a low price country, but when you step up, you need to be more active outside the country for your export business and things. And, and, and there, I think uh, this needs to be developed. I have seen uh, uh, also the, uh, things run by the government, but independently, uh, organization who should support and develop export from uh, India where I say they are not capable of doing it. They don't have the knowledge and skills to help the companies. Uh, they have exhibitions that used to bring in a lot of foreigners and create a lot of business. But today, they are not at all playing that role. They are not up to the standard and quality for, for doing things. And there are new ways of meeting people. Exhibitions will always be there, but it, they, you need to take a new step. And here I see I have a lot of things in my head what India need to do, and I think it is possible, yes, but India has to decide that we are a part of the world, we, we need help, and we can help both, both ways. That, uh, India has so many good resources, use them in a positive way. No, excellent, very good, uh, this thing. So this is, we do have uh, cultural exchanges and uh, this thing, but the number of uh, Europeans working in India could definitely, you know, increase. Uh, that is what you're alluding to. Yeah, I mean, Indian companies should employ people from Europe, engineers, uh, young people. They should bring in people with a good exam to work also side by side with them. So who understand the European uh, style and, and market and, and, and how people invent and so on. And there are a lot of Europeans who are very good crea in crea creatives. And, if you, if you go to an Indian exporter and ask for, for dolls, I want to buy dolls from India, then he will show you dolls. And you can go to 20 other exporters, they will show you exactly the same dolls. You go to China, you see every exporter had different kinds of dolls. And this is to go to the same to everything. So what we need to see from India is more, more of creations, more of design, new design, more of things, and doing it, understanding Europe. And there are a lot of Indians who are very successful in Europe also. Some of them can be brought back to India and help. Others, other, other cases, bring Europeans in and let them teach the Indians in India so that things can develop. It, it, it can go, like in China, it's no problem. But you have to do it. No, I think that's a very important uh, point which you raised uh, about uh, the range and uh, you see, Probably the the government support for Chinese businesses and the you know the way they are uh, the capital burn there is something which uh, you know was never WTO compatible, but somehow they were able to create that system. Uh, yeah. Indians have worked on high interest rates and limited capital, so that has shrunk. I is there a uh, you think a lack of culture of innovation? and design, is that what you're alluding to? Uh, partly. I mean, uh, you can say that among poor people in India, they are fantastic in doing innova innovations. But um, uh, on the more industrial level, where it comes to producing items, um, when I go to a lot of exporters in India, they show me Indian designs who are typical for India. And that has a marketing. In Europe, but a limited market, uh, of course, to Indians living in Europe, but otherwise, to to, to Europeans, it has a, a has a market, but limited. But it, the technique people use for making handicraft, for making uh, in uh, you know household products and everything, they could be uh, easily uh, much better if they used designs which are more European and not uh, traditional Indians. So side by side with the traditional Indian designs, there should be designs that European people uh, appreciate uh, and don't think it's from India, but think this is a more European looking design that we want in our home or we want to use. So like there is a lot of possibilities in that scope. No, no, absolutely. That's a wonderful uh, pointer to you, uh, pointer to us. Uh, what is the what in this new equation with British uh, Britain out of uh, Europe? What is the new equations you think 
what is going to happen to the economy post covid well i mean all europe is is, is a bit shaky uh, to be honest right now uh, britain is leaving uh, the european union uh, and and also we can mention that scotland now says they want to break clause from 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 britain so 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 we don't know where they are going uh, then in south europe we have many countries which are having a very bad economy uh, italy uh, greece uh, spain Spirit. who who is also hard hit by this pandemic and so on they're spending more money that they don't have so so it it will be tough how to handle this uh, in the future and in the eastern europe we have a lot of countries who are not uh, uh, and along with sticking to to the total democratic ways that we used to have are but are more uh, more but political parties try to take the control over over the um, uh, juridical systems for instance try to take control over the media and so in a way that we have not seen in the rest of europe and and which is also much more going now much further than it does in in, in india so I think we have to see that uh, India is pulling in different direction, and and we don't know uh, how this can be handled. There is a big challenge for European Union to keep together and and function well in the future. So so yes, there are question marks in there, but at the same time, from the Indian perspective, there there should be a lot of uh, possible cooperations and so on. And, and and Sweden and India, for instance, has so many cooperations. And India, with so many other European countries, has so many cooperations, and that should be developed. Uh, many of these cooperations are on 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 a government level, but I think also it's important that on company level, people try to integrate more from Indian companies with European companies. Where do you see the maximum uh, possibilities of increase in business? If if there was a free trade agreement between. Uh, European Union and India, you think that will trigger off, uh, you know, more cooperation and more intense uh, trade relations? You think that is a good way forward post COVID? Uh, it, it would definitely help. But as I said before, I think that has to be combined with something else. And that is that that more, more a, a wider range of products from India. If you look at China, they, they they literally have millions of different products you can buy from there. From from, from India, you feel that uh, maybe there are 1,500 products you can buy. Uh, so types of so I mean the, 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 it it should be broadened. The production should not only go in in, in these traditional things. And I mean the, the car industry has done gone from very low level to very high. There's a success story from India. And like that, India should develop also in other areas. Okay, this we are trying to do that in electronics, in the mobile phone industry, uh, you know, servicing the entire world. That's the attempt. And I think a number of sectors are now coming in. Uh, yeah, this that's very good. And what do you see the, how do you see the new world order in terms of uh, defense relationships? Uh, you know, do you see that? that dramatically changing post covid or uh, you know it I mean, looks same and with the uh, we, we with the new administration we, we see different things ha happening all over the world of course now now with uh, uh, mr biden becoming the us president uh, it will partly go back a little more as it was before but i think that um, uh, uh, europe will be uh, Less early, Euro center of the world was kind of in Europe, a little of center of the world in USA, and the rest of the world was trying to copy and so on. But I think one has to see things differently. You know, I think Indian companies also have to say that yes, Europe is also a good place for marketing. It's a, a good place to be active, to integrate with Indian activities. Uh, more companies from India should should have run daughter companies in. in Sister companies and so in Europe, uh, and 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 bring in and but there is of course a cultural differences. I mean the the cultural difference between South of Europe and India is less than the cultural difference between North of Europe and India. That must also be understood. So so uh, to be successful in Germany and Sweden and this country, 
takes a little more than in uh, uh, and, and than Italy, for instance, which is more similar to India than than what the north of Europe is, and and that's because India has a very relation based uh, culture, whereas the north of Europe is very much uh, based on on fact based uh, formal relationship. Uh, I would like to add. Uh to this uh, question, with your uh, permission, uh, Mr. Pankaj, allow me that I have traveled extensively and talked and discussed this particular issue with uh, across the Euro and the not only US, but that part of a continent and i ha i had a chance to work with the joe biden son who is an attorney so question here comes is uh in this scenario that indian people are not good at maintaining equality that's the one part. And the people from the Sweden are different. Europe, every part is different. Technically, if you see, they have got a culture. But if you go to the US, they don't have any culture. They say, I'm from Italy, I'm from Spain, I'm from India. So we need to understand the diversity, unity, difference of a culture plus quality if you want to export the eastern europe is providing the product at a much lower price but a good quality so that's my take on your question thanks Yeah, and is is uh, for you for your industry. Uh, the best part with the Scandinavian country is every MNC has a office in Scandinavian part because it is a most innovative part of the world. Most of the patents are coming from this part of world. So you can get benefited, your association can get benefited, benefited from innovation, but they are very, uh, over can explain why they are not open to work with us. No, uh, if I hang on there, first of thing, uh, when it comes to innovations, we must say that, uh, Per capita, Sweden is number one in the world. Uh, most people in the world doesn't know how many inventions come from Sweden. Uh, some very basic one, like the refrigerator, is a Swedish invention, for instance. And the, 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 there are so many other products which comes from Sweden. But I think that there is a scope for Indian companies who can manufacture um, new inventions from Sweden. But as, as uh, Mr. Kabraj thing here was saying, uh, there are there are also some obstacles. Uh, the thing is, people must understand each other. If you look how an industry is uh, run in India, it it is very centered to the boss. It, the boss decides everything. All the important decision goes to the boss and so on. It's a hierarchic structure. If you see the Sweden, it's quite a flat thing. <laughs> The boss is more a, a coordinator than a decision maker. The, the people are giving a lot of power of their own uh, work and, and what they are doing, and they have freedom to make a lot of decisions. Okay, if they make bad decisions, they have maybe to look for another job. But people normally do good decisions because they are hands-on in the situation. And when these two words meet each other, there is, of course, a challenge. How can we bridge it? 
And I know a Swedish company. I met a, a managing director from a Swedish company in the countryside who is a steel company. And this steel company, uh, they produced uh, some steel products and was selling all over Europe. And a Mumbai-based company, also in the steel, uh, they purchased this steel company in Sweden with the purpose to, to, to get uh, access to the all of Europe because the Swedish company had the clients all over Europe, so the Indian companies could get them straight away. And that works well, well in many ways. But the managing director said the problem is that uh, uh, when we talk to the head office in Mumbai, we don't get the information we want. They don't tell us when the next delivery should come. If you want to know the next delivery, we can't uh, call the head office in Mumbai. We have to uh, uh, call the shipping agent and ask if it's booked or not. And this kind of cultural things where Indian people many times hold information with them instead of sharing it with, with uh, everyone uh, is so different from Sweden where information is shared a lot among the employees and everybody. And you, you don't keep keep it as something that is dangerous to share, but you you want to optimize the system by knowing. And so these culture things, uh, uh, I think I think the development of the management, how things are done is something, it's coming already in India, it, it's happening already things, but it needs to go a bit faster <laughs> only. I think we, we've uh, lost uh, connection with Mr. Sharma. Uh, so, if there's anything else you'd like to share, please go ahead. Otherwise, we can shut the session. Or uh, we can go to the lounge as well after this session so oh. that you can experience to talk in private. Mr. Sharma, not able to connect. And uh, Mr. Sharma expressed uh, a point that he is not able to join. He's been a long time friend to me. He's a chair of India and UK Cultural Committee of uh, Parliament of UK as well. So I will tell you so many things about these people of, offline. And we can- okay, Excellent. So, so thank you, me, everybody. Let, I let, hope- let, uh, me, let me end by thanking everyone and, and thanking Imba for this, but also saying that anyone who wants to discuss with me, I am most uh, eager and want to help those who want help and who want to open up. And I believe in India. I am a friend of India. So that's for you. sure. But uh, let, let's cooperate. Let's open up and, and it can be successful. Thank you and very much. So, sir, please come to the lounge okay. and we can talk in okay. person. And uh, it's my sincere thanks to Oberg, Mr. Pankaj Mendru and Mr. Sharma ji. And he is a very well connected guy of a politically uh, global Indian origin people. So I have seen it as a person. Thank you. Uh, you'll have to end the session, uh, Kavi, Raj. Shut the this thing. This I'm not.